So good afternoon, everyone. Um, in an effort to keep the plenary moving, we're going to be starting on time at 2 o'clock, which is now. Um, and my name is Phil Lamma with the NSTIC NPO. Um, I am pleased and, and happy to be working with um, the pilots on a day-to-day -day, um, standpoint. Um, this session here, we'll be introducing our three new pilots um, to the NSTIC and, and to you as the plenary. They'll be talking about um, a bit of the overview of what they're the, the challenge that they're looking to solve um, and some of their approaches. And of course, we'll be having um, two out briefs from some of our current pilots about you know, some of the great results that they have as well as um, some of their lessons learned. Um, in this, um, after the, the pilots have gone through their presentations, we will be having a panel Q&A. But meanwhile, we have opened a live SIFT um, a meeting, so I think um, Andrew's going to be showing the, the, the code. And what we encourage the participants, e either here and online, is to hold your questions. We'll be answering them at the end. But if you do have questions while the presenters are going through, we encourage you to submit them to the live SIFT so that we'll have a good queue of questions when we get to the Q&A at the end. Um, but that's, uh, that's the overview of the next session. And I think our first presenter will be Rafael Diaz from GSMA. Thank you, Rafael. Cool. All right, g'day. Um, so as Phil said, uh, my name is Rafael from uh, the GSMA. And uh, I'm going to give a presentation on uh, sort of who we are. We don't have a very strong brand awareness here in the States, so I'll just go off who we are, um, what, we're, what we're up to in the mobile identity space, um, and then on our solution that we have uh, that we're rolling out with mobile carriers globally, and then, uh, and then to talk about uh, what's obviously most pertinent for this session, uh, the NSTIC pilot that we're, that we're doing, uh, which is called uh, MC for US. So GSMA, we're um, a trade association that represents um, over 90% of the mobile carriers globally. So we have over 800 members um, within our membership. And uh, we work with them to deploy uh, common services, common requirements, um, common initiatives to ensure that uh, they're adopted globally and interoperable. So we started off as a roaming agreement between European carriers. Um, and uh, that sort of, we sort of morphed from that in the 80s uh, when they saw the value of being able to use your phone from one country to another to speak to someone, and then they realised that uh, it's important for all services that's, that are with mobile carriers to be interoperable. So at Chiefs May, we're currently going un uh, underway through what we call Vision 2020, um, where we've um, sort of mapped out the future scape of, uh, of mobile, and uh, we've set up four what we call pillars, uh, to support uh, the Vision 2020 and helping the mobile operators prepare for the future. So um, the four pillars we have are personal data, uh, the Internet of Things, digital commerce, and Network 2020. So uh, Internet of Things is um, what we call like connected living, machine to machine, so having a smart car, a smart utility, um, smart fridges, etc. Digital commerce, so looking at the mobile payments world and how the MNO can play a role in that. Uh, network 2020, which is sort of our backbone, uh, looking at how we prepare the networks um, for the future, and that might be looking at um, IP-based uh, networks as well. But the one that's actually probably the biggest one now at GSMA went from being quite a fledgling um, program a couple of years ago to now the biggest program by far. Um, we got, uh, we've just got our new budget approved for April 1 which is uh, significantly more than the others, and a lot of pressure from our board, which has made up CEOs of some of the largest um, mobile carriers, which in turn are some of the largest companies in the world, um, have identified as one of the most important areas to focus on, which is uh, mobile identity. So as a program, I'm not going to go through this, um, but uh, our lead operators that we currently have um, for this financial year, which is about to be completed on March 31st, um, they're made up from operators around the world, um, some big ones like China Mobile, which has you know, over 700 million mobile subscribers, uh, which is uh, twice as many as there are in the US together as a country. Um, that's one operator. Um, and then 
companies like Telefonica Group, which have uh, uh, pushing 500 million globally. They've got uh, Opcos all around the world, Orange, the same, uh, Etisla, Axiata. So we've got quite a um, nice global influence there. Um, and uh, we work with them to help uh, develop um, different propositions, one's for the end user, one for the service provider. Uh, we look at developing core solutions like uh, specifications and requirements to ensure that uh, when an MNO deploys something, that it's interoperable with an MNO, not just in their own market, but uh, in another country as well. So uh, again, so some of a uh, bit more specific, uh, the program scope that we have uh, within the personal data program. Uh, so we look to facilitate cooperation, obviously, among operators in, in a market. Um, we define key elements like API definitions, uh, authenticators, etc. cetera. Um, another big area that we work on is privacy. So we're developing a, um, privacy, a set of privacy principles for mobile identity and mobile connect in particular. Um, we're looking to help onboard service providers to mobile connect and uh, help them engage with mobile operators, not just in a given market, but a region and hopefully globally. And uh, looking at different scope and agreements with vendors to assist in uh, low cost solutions being deployed. So Mobile Connect is our solution that we, um, that we have developed and uh, are now deploying with mobile carriers. Um, it uh, is uh, OpenID Connect uh, compliant. Um, and these are some of the main bullets here. Uh, we want to utilize a mobile phone as a tool for authentication. Obviously, being mobile operator led, that's very important. Um, easy to use across all use cases and channels, uh, which is, again, is, is quite critical. And I think this is quite important on the third bullet, ensuring that the security level um, is uh, optimized for the, for the corresponding use case. And uh, that's to say, if a use case is quite simple, um, just a simple login, we don't need to over-engineer it, um, something very costly. Uh, we can do something light that is effective for that approach. But if, in turn, if there's something that is quite um, security um, sensitive, we need to ensure that the complexity and uh, the mechanisms in place to help protect uh, those services. Privacy principles and insurance globally consistent across uh, operators uh, across the world. So these are some of the possible use cases. I'm sure you know, it's, it's, not, it's not new news to this crowd, but we're looking at uh, logins for online and mobile services, um, approvals and permissions, enterprise security, uh, banking, which um, we believe to be quite an important area um, that, needs, that may require mobile operators to help assist with authenticating users, and e-government as well. The consumer benefits, um, the use of the password, is not a good experience. Um, a study just came out again for 2014. The number one password was 123456 for the year. Um, the year before that, it was uh, password one. So uh, uh, we understand that, not just us, but I think as an industry, we understand that passwords are not a good user experience. And some quite big service providers have been uh, out there in the market um, you know, confidently saying that their approach is to try and get rid of the password in sort of the next five years. So uh, we understand that too, and, uh, and we're working to, to replace it with a system that's more efficient and uh, also more secure. But for service providers out there, um, again, I'm not going to run through these one by one, given, given the time sensitives, but um, I think for them it's very important for their end user to connect with them better. Um, to not have uh, dropout rates, to ensure that they are registered with them and utilizing the service and not, um, not getting frustrated and, uh, and uh, walking away from their service because it's just too cumbersome to either register or to remember their password or remember their username, etc. cetera. Um, fewer fake accounts, which is, quite, which is becoming quite important for uh, a lot of uh, social media services, et cetera. Um, the amount of use cases available to them and a single API, which I think is quite critical. So the Mobile Connect initiatives that we're rolling out, um, currently rolling out, uh, so we have a pilot slash commercial initiative uh, underway in uh, Sri Lanka, um, and uh, the UAE and Bangladesh are now live, and uh, we're working, so we sort of focus on those, those areas because there was a, one operator group called Axiata out of Malaysia, which is quite a, a big company in Southeast Asia. And uh, they have local operator companies in some markets, and they sort of started off with some smaller markets uh, for that. 
for their sort of uh, first trial run of implementing it, and that will grow as Mobile Connect um, um, grows as well. Uh, but we're starting to uh, investigate and develop pilots in other markets. So uh, China is, is, is a market that's developing quite strongly, and I believe we'll have something out there quite soon. Canada, uh, Malaysia, Germany, Spain, and Australia. And then furthermore, we're doing additional studies in, uh, in the UK, which is government-backed here in the US with NSTIC, and uh, Indonesia and Italy. Uh, we're looking at just single MNO implementations there, given that there is one dominant mobile operator in the market. So this is our NSTIC pilot, um, which we're, we're very proud of um, and pleased to have been um, selected by, by NIST. Um, so we're working with um, the Open Identity Exchange, OAX, um, and the four largest mobile carriers here in the States, which are AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, and T-Mobile. This is one of the first times that all four carriers have worked together on a, on a single initiative from the onset. So as a member-led organization like GSMA, we're, incredib we're incredibly pleased that they're cooperating together uh, on this initiative, and we're very proud that, they, that they've come together to work with us on this. And um, sort of go through a bit of the specifics here. And this is our project roadmap. So, um, so the phase one is um, sort of our quick spin-up phase that we're going through right now, and uh, we look to complete uh, in, in the near future. And uh, I usually say it's just to make it go ding. We're just trying to um, see how we work together as four carriers and ensure that we federate and able to successfully um, implement the architecture um, that, that, we're, that we've decided on as a group. And uh, once that phase is completed, uh, we'll then move on to phase two, which is a waterfall effect we're looking at. And um, they'll look at different authenticator options and user experience testing. So we're we'll looking at more advanced uh, authenticator. Uh, so looking at um, different types of second factor authentication. Um, we might look at things like utilizing the SIM applet in the future as well. And then phase three, which will be um, next year, uh, we will then look at operational considerations. What does it mean? Uh, we've learned, you know, all this information that we can possibly utilize um, for, to implement internally, uh, what does that mean? So uh, that's a bridge we haven't discussed yet, but in, once we get to the end of 2015, moving into 2016, uh, that will be the final year in our focus. So as I said, it's a waterfall um, between, the, between the, th the phases, and uh, we're sort of taking a, um, a detailed approach, but as far as sort of MNOs working together on a single initiative is actually we've put together some pretty quick timelines. Hopefully we can get some good results coming out of that uh, by the halfway of this year. So the technical overview here, um, again, not gonna go through it. Um, we're not all engineers or architects, but, and I'm definitely not one. Um, so the user, the user flow here is um, an individual um, is say uh, on their tablet or their desktop and they're looking to access a bank account um, through, let's say, um, Bank of Georgia Tech, and um, the authentication request, they, so they, on their tablet desktop, they put the service access request to the service provider, they put the authentication request into the MNO world, so we have an identity gateway, an authentication service sitting in there, which may or may not be common between, between three carriers, and then the mobile phone will be utilized as the authentication method or the authentication tool. Uh, and then it goes back up to the tablet desktop and they're granted access <coughs> to that site. Um, as you can see, uh, the authentication request between the service provider and the MNO realm or domain, um, we're utilizing the Open ID Connect um, APIs to ensure that uh, we can try and get as much traction as possible with uh, global service providers out there in the market. So some of the phase one design principles, um, just to recap, um, so we want to demonstrate that a mobile device um, based authentication solution uh, for any online services works across all four carriers. So uh, that's first and foremost something that we want to prove, um, not just to ourselves, but to service providers out there in the market who potentially want to engage with them. Um, we want a modular uh, technical architecture that um, to ensure that there's as much flexibility as possible so we can adjust to different service provider requirements and ensure that time to market is quick. 
I think that's very important. Um, mobile operators aren't the only ones who are working in this space to develop a solution to solve some of these problems, so we need to ensure that we're fast enough to compete with them. Uh, hub architecture is very importantly important. We want to deliver some of the efficiency in the market. We don't want four different solutions by four different mobile carriers out there. We want to ensure that there's one solution um, interacting with the service provider. And that comes with the federation of, um, of the MNOs through the One API Exchange, which is a service platform that GSME has, which allows um, service providers to look up um, which MNOs to direct their request. And um, I guess you know the last point is pretty pretty critical there. You know anything that we do do at GSMA, we want to ensure it's interoperable, not just within our industry, but um, the ecosystem as a whole. So it's very important that we adopt uh, open industry standards, and um, and utilising Open ID Connect is is one way to, that we believe is uh, to do that, and uh, we're quite uh, positive on that being successful. So that's presentation again. Um, I'm not sure if there's a Q&A right after this or if we wait for a panel at the end. Wait for a panel at the end. My colleague Ray, unfortunately, I've got to catch a flight back to West Coast, but he will be available. And uh, he's actually the uh, program manager for the initiative, and he knows it inside out probably more than I do. Uh, so he'll be able to uh, um, give some insights and answer some of the questions that you may, that you may have for it. Thanks for your time.